I showed you guys some value thumbs from last time. Um, value thumbnails of space and just things like that. So doing the same thing now in color. So doing quite a few of these a day. Um, these are both space, creating space practice, also copying hue, meaning again with the copy thing. Just being able to pick the right colors. Let's put it that way. I'm never using the color picker. It's all done by eye. So being able to put the right color to pick the right color and color was a big thing I mean if you think value is so much easier compared to color because you only have one variable how light or how dark with with hue you get into color temperature you get to pick the, the right color the right saturation and obviously with stuff like um, simultaneous contrast and stuff like that I mean it becomes a very tricky thing to like well is this supposed to be the same color but just gray or is this gonna be a completely different color you get into a lot of trouble if you don't have enough practice and again that's why you copy a lot so when you're copying I think actually the issue people might have is they think it's some sort of mindless thing you cannot copy mindlessly unless you're color picking and maybe you have a line drawing that you've done by tracing over the image and just stuff like that maybe you're doing it mindlessly then but even then I mean if you do all that stuff mindlessly then you're at least gonna maybe focus on your brushwork or something there, there will be something that you're gonna get from it I never think that it's just as easy as this is useful this is not 80% of the things that you think are not useful like with all that stuff I have zero idea what I'm doing but I'm doing it and, and I'm learning as I'm going along I am thinking about stuff but not like um, having like a flip chart like this study will have made me 3% better no you see that in retrospect I see that as when I look at it with you guys now and I go over it and I see well this is what I've been doing unconsciously to a degree this is what I because your brain picks up on patterns and hey this is how I learn like let's try more of these and you're like okay brain let's do that this is not to say do stuff mindlessly this is to say there's value in everything that you're involved in and I've stopped on this because um, this is some imagination stuff stuck in the middle of nowhere so after have you see actually oh I just noticed it I've been doing these for for a few days I've been doing space so people say when you copy stuff make sure to apply it to your own work after so actually what I've been doing is I have been doing composition and space stuff and then after a few days of doing that I've actually ended up doing one of these I can't say if it's intentional or not but this is basically trying to create space now from the stuff I've done bear in mind again those are as much color and value studies as they are actual environment studies and this is as much a practice in just doing stuff from building values from imagination as it is actual space building you can't possibly build or you know make something until you're thoroughly familiar with all the materials and stuff you're making imagine trying to make like a house imagine trying to build a house with like bricks and stuff and you have zero idea of how the bricks go together how do you glue them together how do you make them level like you have the weirdest house after like a month you could build it for like a year and you have just like a weird box that's just falling everywhere that's like full of holes you have like goats and stuff they're just walking in all the time you can't possibly do it until you're thoroughly familiar familiar with the building blocks these are the building blocks the value the color the shape all that stuff the perspective these are the building blocks you need to practice all those you need to copy lots and lots if you had never built a house you wouldn't just try to build a house just out of your head right you'd go to someone else's house and see how they've done it maybe just kick them out and just live in their house but you would just see how they've done it and then you try to do the same thing with your own house so you should copy what was that quote um, good artists borrow great artists steal something like that um, after having done it with value so after having done some of these thumbs in value I'm then reverting to line because you know just understanding uh, there's a structure underneath that I don't if you do them just in value you have a lot more things that you need to think about I mean you don't have any defined surfaces or structures and stuff if you do them in line you're simplifying in a way 
so I, just one thing I'm thinking of is actually when you do get more experienced it's better sometimes if you just do them in value you know thumbnails when you're doing imagination stuff it's, it's better if you sometimes just start out in color or in value because then you can read a lot of stuff in the clouds you know when you just plop down some shapes and stuff and you can see oh this can be this and this can be that I never thought of that so that like that creative exploration thing that's a different process to this you know sometimes there's value in doing it one way sometimes there's value in doing it in a different way so if you're not experienced if you don't know what you're doing if you're just struggling with basic building blocks with perspective and stuff then doing them in the simplest way is effective sometimes when you do get more experience then you start and you do stuff from it's just like cruising in a car like once once you've driven once you've pumped the brakes 50 times to just like get to a stall right in front of like a traffic light or something when you should be going instead of stopping once you've done that enough times then you can just cruise you know and it's great when you can do that when you can just dive in and you don't really care about all the small stuff because you've put the time in the small stuff doing more imagination stuff just trying to get used to composition trying to make stuff read trying to just establish a scene very stiff like I've said before a lot of face on straight angle sort of stuff still very much um, hung up on my perspective having to be perfectly mechanically correct and stuff like that and again same sort of thing I would probably never do it in the same way that I did it then just because you know when I'm doing it you, you see those aren't guidelines those to me are like um, sacred sort of things that you should never deviate from every single thing conforms to the line exactly never deviating by absolutely any minor degree so it's a very stiff way to work instead I would just give myself some guidelines now and then I would sort of eyeball stuff that it goes in the right place and I might even not have it go to the right place if I want my shape to be in a different way but these are all things again that first you need to do everything the stiff and correct way just so you get familiar with it and then you can get looser everything starts off if you go to a dance class I'm sure you'll be the same you'll be super stiff and then after a year you'll be like whatever people do for dancing now I don't dance yeah. so this was a thanks you copy um, I was actually pretty happy with this one it was one of the first times I ever used um, technical not just trying to you know do it freehand but actually getting some ellipses in there getting some circles and just understanding that people do use more than just freehand to do stuff that people do use all the tools available to them going back to imagination and let me just see the overall picture of what I've been doing for quite some time so basically I would do a lot of quick studies some quick copies then I'd go over and I'd do something that takes a longer time so this is probably taking me about a day or two so I would do stuff that takes me like 20 minutes 30 minutes I do some very quick ones and this is just building volume right this is just getting a lot of stuff under your belt then you go over and you do something more challenging something that takes uh, more time so that the more time it takes sometimes the more you return back to something the more um, accurate things you need to do so if it's a 20 minute thing then just getting the shapes in the right place and stuff that's good enough but when you keep coming back and then you keep refining things that means that more and more shapes need to be in the correct place the correct lightness the correct shape all that stuff so it's a very good thing for every 10 20 quick studies you do to have a longer study and you can see one here and there's gonna be another one he this might just be a thumb this one was a Noah Bradley study so there is one here and another one well I suppose it's definitely this one that's the actual next one so this is the Soul Reaver uh, it's Raziel it took me how long did it take me it must have taken me a few days I suppose I can't really see um, I've not saved the process PSD but every few days so this is the 10th and then the one before that is so yeah 10th and 15th every few days every 20 30 studies of quick get under your belt sort of studies you get to have some longer ones mixing in some imagination with a lot of copying so everything is progressing together right just like we said before pushing boundaries and experimenting 
no one just does one thing. I mean, don't get hung up on what people say. Don't get hung up on, oh, he said I should do this, I should do that. Well, keep in mind that what you're doing is a process that develops over the course of months. Like some guy looking at your work on a forum or whatever and just saying something to you, that guy's not followed your work for the duration of your whole process. Yes, they might have more experience, yes, but they just don't know you, you know, they haven't had the time to look at your process. So you might have posted something that's like perfectly copied and you've done that for the sake of familiarizing yourself with an aspect that you weren't familiar with. And someone says, you should not copy. You're like, oh man, I've done the right No, you have not. You've done the right thing. That person is probably speaking out of ego, out of just wanting to say something about them being right or just wanting to give advice because maybe they've done something that day. You know, I don't know why they're saying it. You know, it could be that they're just having a day or it's just, I don't know. Or that they're genuinely trying to help but they just don't know that they're not thinking about it enough. But don't get hung up on that. Just keep doing your thing. More imagination stuff. This is one of the first times now that I've I've tried to use reference for the picture. I didn't use reference for everything. I did use reference for the anatomy uh, somewhere. Yeah, that's the final. So at this point, this is June again. So six months into it, this was my best imagination thing. And the reason why there's so many problems with it is no reference. Not that I didn't use reference for certain parts, but I didn't use reference in the right way. Like I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't do research in the way that you would do research if you're actually wanting to do this and I didn't do that not because of laziness but because I didn't know like I didn't know how you... to me imagination drawing or painting means it comes from your head right you're not supposed to look at something you're not supposed to do any of that stuff you just it's imagination and should come from your head and if you haven't learned everything right if you haven't learned all the stuff if it's not coming out properly from your head then you've not put enough stuff into your head problem with that is it's going to take you about a thousand years to be able to memorize everything correctly, properly, and to be able to render it just without looking at anything. You're probably going to be amazing in a thousand years, but I don't know if anyone's ever done that before. Um, I don't mean the big rabbit with the sword. Uh, imagination, you know, that is that is pure imagination. Like, you don't need reference. That is that is imagination. I mean, it doesn't exist. It's weird. No one's thought of it. That's pure imagination, right? Is it good? No. But that that's imagination. So it's just different ways of doing the same thing. One is to get a lot of reference of actual structures, buildings, creatures, whatever, and then try to compose them together when you have enough skill to be able to do that. The other thing is just to fish stuff out of your head, like a big bunny, um, mutant, uh, rodent, attacking mouse um, of a Viking I guess or a big lady with a sword um, I don't know it's imagination more imagination the big part uh, that I'm struggling with and I still have trouble with and I'm working on this here is just getting the values well one is obviously just you know structures again this is no reference so this is just from the head if you don't look at stuff you're gonna have a very hard time imagining what things actually are like because this was supposed to be like a mine a coal mine or something and you're like uh, on a little thing and all that railroad track I don't know why it's just basically coming up with scenarios and trying to do them but the bigger problem is you know if you don't look at an actual mine you have no idea what a mine is so this this can be a mine for like a four-year-old but it's not an actual real one but again the point of these is not just to get something it's not it's it's learning you know the structure of when you're doing it from imagine how do I light something how do I make something read which which part should I darken which part should I lighten and it's also learning space do you remember like a month ago I was just doing thumbnails um, of copying composition and building space this is now actually building space so again nothing is wasted I mean don't ever feel bad for having poor work poor work is the paving blocks for good work more imagination this time values reading a lot better no idea of how to you know how to finish it off how to polish it or how to actually pull structures out of the chaos but it's reading and you can see this not reading this reading practice yes that's what it that's what happens that's what it does um, one thing about this is um, uh, 
you can do studies not just you know you have you have a picture and you're not trying to copy it perfectly you're looking at it and then you're trying to do it from imagination or you take some things like you just plop two or three shapes down and then you try to finish it off from imagination and in that way you're practicing doing it from imagination and people can't say you're copying because you're not so it's two things it's like two studies in one it's one is imagination study trying to get stuff to balance to read to all that stuff and just like the familiar because this forces you to have to memorize stuff like what is that like is that temple supposed to be uh, like it, does it have arches is this how big is it because this could be a barn sort of or it could be a temple very far away if you just give it some more perspective and depending on the size of the lines that you would put on the ground you would define how far away this is obviously that's stuff that I can't at all do at that time but it's just things that are there and as seeds sort of as ideas that are going to develop more color getting better uh, being able to pick more accurately so pushing both copies and imagination studies together and sometimes I will have an anomaly with a study that would turn out with an imagination piece that would turn out like a hundred times better than by the way these are um, just more more studies just more study imagination slash copied study so these are half are Feng Zhu half are like Noah Bradley and other artists but looking at it then not looking at it and trying to do it without looking to make yourself develop um, you know a better eye for how stuff reads and how you should render it when you're doing it from imagination and again I was saying sometimes I would get an anomaly of, a, of an imagination piece that turns out like a hundred times better and I would discard that because I would think well I looked at a picture and that's why it got to be so much better and I would basically discard my own experience of what works and I would say no this isn't how it should be done when I would get a hundred times better results and I would just show you which one I mean if I can quickly find it I mean you've already seen all the other ones and imagination stuff always pretty poor like always stuff not reading always stuff not really coming out too well and then this one all of a sudden it read like you can see everything is detailed it's got stuff going on I don't understand like definitely don't have a good understanding of 80% of the things I want to do but it was a thing that you could see and you could read and it had some sort of weird story to it or whatever I'm not really focused on that but you could see all the elements they would read and my biggest problem with all imagination stuff before that and still struggling with is that it wouldn't read and I wouldn't be able to clarify and define things because with imagination stuff there's just so many possibilities that you inevitably end up somewhere stuck in the chaos of just a billion different things you could do that one came out the the one I just showed the anomaly one it came out great compared to all the other ones and I discarded it because I thought well I looked at a photo of a mountain and then I took the value structure from that and then defined my own thing but stupid stupid that's the exact thing you should do that's precisely what you should look at nature or you should look at something and then you should take what you see whether it's the value structure or the forms or whatever you should take that as your starting point and then build on it not sure if I can show this on YouTube or not so um, I'm gonna go through it quick just a figure and happy with it because I hadn't done figures in a few months until I showed you, you remember I showed you guys I showed you the first one I did that took me about nine hours this one and I stopped because it took me too long I thought I must be doing something wrong values were all pasty and weird this was in May and then in this is July so what two three months later a whole figure in color still weird transitions but it's in color now like it's not just value it's now in color I'm gonna quickly go because I think YouTube may not like boobs so more imagination stuff in between and then 2nd of July finally putting putting things together getting to the next level of being able to apply accurate drawing accurate value accurate color and even first time again pushing boundaries putting some texture on top of that to finalize something and this was probably done in a few hours so let's say this took me let's say it took like two three hours I wouldn't have been able to do that before so it doesn't really matter how long something takes it doesn't matter none of that stuff's important 
the importance is doing new things and pushing boundaries and experimenting all the time so the moment I've done this pushing boundaries next one is experimentation this one was I define these I try to make like a pattern and I try to scale them so basically it's the first time that I was trying to use the software to help me instead of just thinking I should be doing everything by hand otherwise it's like cheating or whatever none of that stuff matters this is the first time I then tried to do some technical stuff so immediately experimentation pushing boundaries always one after the other more studies more landscapes more defining shapes more composition these are uh, movie still studies now just trying to get familiar with composition with shapes size of shapes on on the canvas how to imply stuff like this you can see especially in like Craig, Craig Mullins's work I remember there was um, some huge war scenes he had done and, and the guy just like paints a few figures and then just implies another billion that's an amazing thing like an amazing thing to be able to shortcut stuff like that and that's like the true mastery is not being rendering stuff perfectly but showing enough so that people render their own stuff in their head um, I think it's about time I cut this one off too imagination I guess the last one I'm going to show you before a end is, is going to be just this. You know, after all the other ones that didn't read, that didn't do all that, and they were all in value, all of a sudden, in color and legible. Doesn't work. Weird little robot figure. I wanted to have like a little robot playing with like a little bird trying to teach it how to fly or something, or learning from it how to fly. But um, went from value, didn't read, going to color, reading. Is it predictable? No. Is it something that I can reproduce? No. But every once in a while, you get that fluke, sort of, that shows you, all right, well, this happened, like, how did I do it? So it shows you one thing, yeah, you can do it, and the other thing is there is a process, you can improve, and all you got to do is you just got to stick to the work. It doesn't matter how long it takes. To me, drawing, actually, and painting is like I've been doing it a particularly hard time, sort of, you know no money work different country that I work that I live in and stuff and just lots of different pressures going on all the time but at the same time it seems to me like it comes quicker than I would have thought it would come I mean every six months you get a huge improvement after only a few years you're able to do it I I say it's quick because if I think about like a professional sport and you have to start when you're a kid and and it will take you like a decade of practice whether you make it to a championship or not you don't even know but like the amount of insane practice every single day intensity and all that stuff compared to this it seems to me that this is actually coming pretty quick so in the next video I'm gonna show you guys doing longer studies and getting to the next level with basically putting everything together that you've worked on <coughs> doing I call these master studies I know master studies are supposed to be studies of you know masters but I call these master study because to me that the idea behind it is the same you spend enough time on something to refine it to polish it to do it to the best of your ability at that time and you don't go to the next work until you've done your work on this one um, let me know what you think about the videos guys and um, I know I said it was gonna be a five-part series but it seems like it's gonna be a 50-part series let me know what you think um, please share it if it's helped you please give it to someone else that it might help if you're on social media or on any of the big websites please if you think it's useful just post it somewhere thank you very much and thank you for watching good luck to all of you